I know, convince him to take it easy. We just went over this. Oh, come on. Right. But they said that he didn't seem to understand. Like, he wasn't even, uh, like, cognizant of, like, what was going on, like, what they were asking him to do. And in the end, they had to actually physically <clears throat> jump on him and disarm him. Well, was he still waving his shot? guns around? I mean, they took him. Yeah, he was probably waving his gun around, but they had to actually, you know, take it away from him and put it. So he's so, stunned. Uh, he seems like stunned of whatever just happened to him. Yeah, uh, th well, and shell shock. They took like, him. Or, yeah. Well, and, yeah. and the terror. Like honestly, I couldn't imagine a more terrifying experience for his colleagues to see. Like, just picture that for a second. You, you're going to a call. Like, obviously, they probably are coworkers. They probably know each other. It'd be like the three of us going and seeing Dan and Dan having a gun and we having guns and Dan pointing his gun at us and be like freaking out. We're, we're like trying to convince Dan, like, what are you doing? Stop pointing your gun at us. We're not going to talk about true crime anymore. We promise. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then having to dis disarm Dan, obviously. E very easily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Barely an inconvenience. <laughs> So yeah, they 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 managed to restrain Zanfretta, and they they take him kind of to I think they took him to like a local like a bar or something. They took him, and they kind of sat him down, and then he, when he calmed down, it was almost like he didn't even remember what happened or why everybody was kind of freaking out about you know like checking on him like are you okay like what's going on here, dude? And he didn't really understand why there was such a fuss about when it just happened. Um, didn't really remember so. Now this this case, when they when they had this, like you know, the, they talked to him, and this involved a UFO, which is something that actually that they they had a handbook <laughs> that there was during the 1970s. There was an actual like procedure about what they had to do. And on, well, uh, listen, that Dan, handbook, they like, wouldn't be very vigilant if they didn't. Do you have a handbook? This is the Institute of Vigilance. Yeah. Being the Institute of Vigilance, they had protocol for yeah. what UFOs, would, contingency <laughs> plans. They got them. Yeah. Right. So what would happen uh, if there was a UFO sighting? And so the first thing is to pretty much uh, contact the the carabinieri. God damn it. You're, <laughs> you're telling me this is a whole team of Batmans? The, what? The Institute of Vigilance? Like they got to continue. It's just no, that would be the Institute of Vengeance. Vengeance. Oh, Vengeance. Oh, yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. All right. Let me say, I misheard. Yeah. Uh, so they had to call in like the I Italian police to actually mm -hmm. to carry out an investigation because this involved an unidentified flying object. Again, this is like Cold War time, so it's like yeah, this probably would be something that people would be interested in uh, to go and investigate. And one of the interesting things that they found, like within you know like the next day or so, about investigating the area which Zanfretta uh, had had his encounter, is they said that they found some. Uh, a couple of unusual marks that they said were about like 2.7 meters in diameter. These like horseshoe or like half circle like marks that were not supposed to be there. Like indentations in the ground? Yeah. Like something may have landed? Like something may have landed there. Just two marks though, not like a tripod. Because we, <laughs> we've talked about other times before, like three, like the three feet. Right. Yeah. So after this after this encounter and this incident, like Zanfredo is kind of, you know, they don't know what's going on. It's like, it's the first time he's ever had this kind of uh, thing, like from, from talking to his other colleagues and, and talking about, Did you hear the, how they all um, vouch for him. Yeah. Like, they all like, vouch listen, for him. this like, guy's never had a fantasy or a weird thought in his head. Yeah. He's, yeah. Really, he's, he's really, never, he's right, like he's never once yeah. talked to me about hurting animals or killing people ever. Um, it, yeah, none of those things happen. Most of his, what are you no, talking about? Yeah, I think all of his no, it, the, colleagues had. It, the weird thing is, is how, who says that? I would never, if someone was like, tell well, me what I didn't, Andrew, I I didn't know like, they said that. I didn't know they said that. That's bizarre. They didn't. I'm making an exaggeration. What I'm saying oh, is, okay. it's a weird thing to say. If someone was like, hey, can you vouch for Andrew where he was? I'd be like, let me tell you something about Andrew. He's never had a weird thought. Yeah, right? I agree. Yeah, no, I, all right. I mean, like, but I feel he's like never, it's also like, he's never had a strange he, fantasy. He's never been into any weird shit. All right, ever. Oh, I guy, understand. Like maybe they're guy. speaking for the institute. Right? Yeah. They didn't want to, like the institute to look bad. It's either that or these guys were like secret lovers and knew 
way too many intimate knowledge <laughs> about each other. Like. Well, that that's where my brain went. I went, I went. This is weird things to say. So instantly, my suspicion was aroused. Was it? <laughs> is that not the term that you say? I don't know. No, no, it works. It works fine. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, the, a majority of the, his colleagues, like, they knew Zanfretta. Like, they've known him before he even worked at the Institute of Vengeance. Like, he originally, like, he was, like, a bartender. I guess he worked as a bartender, and, like, his lieutenant knew him from then. Hold on, hold on, hold on. got him a job sorry, Dan, working there. Where did he, sorry, where? He's Institute, a tar bender? What'd you just say? What was the Institute of what? Institute of Vigilance. Oh, I, I for say. some reason, I thought you said engines, and I'm like, did you say a different... I just heard it wrong. I was like, did he work in another institute of something that I didn't know about? <laughs> I, so I just misheard you. Now, um, with this thing, they, what they didn't really want uh, Zanfreda to kind of suffer from this. Like, it, it, it's something this was totally out of the ordinary, but it was something that couldn't really be overlooked. The fact that he had colleagues that had to physically restrain him like with a weapon um you know it could be a danger to himself and danger hr to is gonna have a field day with this place. oh yeah yeah so uh, there was kind of like a you know, the hesitancy to kind of put him back on the on the beat but it, he, everyone kind of said like you know I mean, it's just a one-off thing like, Say, Freta, you know, give me your badge and your gun huh? yeah. <laughs> give me your pen um, and your, your notepad no he's got a gun <laughs> He's and packing. Gun. We know this. Maybe the gun's a personal thing, though, right? <laughs> Can't take that away. But the event was unusual enough to kind of, you know, garner some attention from the UFO scene, which was still, you know, it was there. Italy had their own. How did they kind find of, out? You know, nascent UFO. It's like he got he had, some of his stuff got like posted like to the you know local newspapers and whatever like the reports got out like about what happened um like just little tidbits and stuff and then you know there's the news local newspapers ran with Kinda it had so a field people day knew what it. he was so uh, zanfreda you know they, they had ufo people coming in and and asking him and, and talking to him about what he saw and um on the 23rd of december 1978 uh, Zanfreda agreed to undergo hypnosis and to, to submit himself for hypnotic regression with a professional um, named Dr. Mauro Moretti. Uh, Moretti. 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 <laughs> and w under hypnosis, uh, it's reported that Zanfreda remembered more about what happened um, that night. Right before his colleagues had come and found him face down. Um, this is where you get some of the description, like a, a more detailed description of what he said, uh, not only about these, the, the green skin, the triangular yellow eyes, but he also said they had something like big thorns and that their mouths seemed to be made of iron oh, and that there's these red veins that were on their head. The and yeah, <laughs> they got dick veins on their forehead. Yeah, it's either that or the and anime they characters. These, they had pointed ears and uh, like they had arms with fingernails. Is this a Namek? Of course. This <laughs> Piccolo. Yeah, it could be. Could be. Um, yeah, it could be large Piccolo. Yeah, it's probably, how tall is Piccolo? Seven feet. It's probably, probably. seven feet. He's, He's pretty tall. Feet. He's yeah. one of the taller ones. He's pretty tall, dude. Um, fingernails. <laughs> And he said that it kind of came out that they came from the third galaxy, yeah. somewhere else, not from here. Yeah, the weird man, thing for me is, like, when they described the fingernails, they said they were like spoons. Yeah, like cocaine. And right. I was like, basically, like, that's like they got drug crafted. fingers. Yeah, cocaine nails. <laughs> well, that's every finger. Drug, boys, it's the 70s. Yeah. They survive 70s. on coke. This, this oh, E.T. race survives on coke, and that's why they came to, came to Earth, because Earth in the 70s, a lot of coke. Boy, so these guys came here scooping. You can't tell by the way I got fingernails that are little spoons because I love drugs. He, he, he. I love drugs. Perfect. It's a pretty good song. You now, like you can sing it all. You want to start again? <laughs> now, he said that these creatures weren't done. They, they, at the end of this, you know, within this hip, first hypnosis session, uh, Zanfredo was. Uh, in his transcript of, of what he was saying, that these these beings communicated to him that they would return soon and in greater numbers. 
like saying people. Um, Question for you. Let's totally interrupt and throw you off your little tangent that you're on and just ruin everything. Yeah. But the way. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.